Oh, it's very sweet of you. Well, good morning, and uh, I'm glad to be here with you. So you just heard I'm a German pastor, and my name is spelled wrong two times in this picture. <laughs> so it's Chris without H and two N at the end of Zimmerman. So just so that you know. I'm a, a German shepherd. Yeah, you just take that down. Yeah. <laughs> Look at me here. Yeah. Well, I'm glad to be here with you. Um, I got in here two days ago on Wednesday evening. Uh, and after 20 hours of traveling, I was so looking forward to some sleep on my flight from Atlanta to San Diego. Um, I, you know, it's a four-hour flight, and I thought, and finally, I get to sleep a little bit. I couldn't sleep on the first plane, so let me just sleep on the second one. But apparently, there was a baseball game that evening. And I didn't know that you could do that, but on that airplane, they actually showed the baseball game. And I had my favorite seat on that airplane. I was that middle, on that middle seat. And apparently, the woman next to me was cheering for one team. And so she woke me up half the time. And then this guy next to me on the other side uh, woke me up the, the other half of the time. Well, I thought your, your big uh, week uh, is coming next week with your election, but I didn't know that baseball was uh, as important to you. So uh, I'm, I'm glad to be here this morning. Uh, thanks for coming to chapel. I take that as, a, as an honor. I know a lot of you have to be here. Some of you choose to be here. And uh, I welcome all of you. I want to talk to you about the passage uh, that we've just read from Colossians chapter 1. It's a passage where the Apostle Paul talks about suffering. And you need to understand that when, when the Apostle Paul talks about suffering, he's not just talking about a little pain in the back when he's getting up in the morning or some headache that he's having. But he's, uh, he's literally talking about inflictions, things that he's enduring up on his own body. We, we can read in, in this, uh, in this uh, book, but also in other uh, chapters in, in scripture that he had to go th with his own body through lots of suffering. Uh, th they beat him up many times. They threw stones at him. They, they put him in prison. He shipwrecked a few times. There's all kinds of things that he had to suffer through. And in this passage, he, he tells us why he's willing to do that why he's willing to suffer with his body. And, and he says and explains it that, that it is because of a message that he wants to share. He says he's doing that because there's a message that has been entrusted to him and to us as a church, and, and that's why he's willing to put up with all of that. And the way he explains that message is, uh, he says that this message is like a mystery, like a secret that has been hidden throughout the ages. It has been there throughout the, the world, from the beginning of the world on, it has been hidden. And, and the, the picture that comes to mind is, is a, w with, a, with a treasure hidden in a field. It's like a treasure hidden in a field, and for, for the ages it has been hidden and no one could see it. But now it has been revealed. It has, the treasure has come to the surface and is revealed to the church. And he puts it in very simple terms what this secret, what this mystery, what this message is all about. Colossians 1, verse 27. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ living in you, the hope of glory, the hope of this world. But within the next few minutes, I want to share a little bit how this passage has, has changed how I see my own life, how I see church, and how I see ministry. And instead of uh, taking these verses apart exegetically, I want to share uh, of an experience that I had a few years ago when we wanted to do a new church plant in the city of Mainz in Germany. So for... for for a number of years, we haven't had a, a church plant in, in Germany. But a, but a group of about 12 to 15 people decided that they want to go out and venture into a new city and do a church plant. And 
Since they did not know how to do that, they called on all kinds of friends from all over the world. So it was in the summer of 2008 when about 100 people came from all over the world into the city of Mainz, which is kind of in the uh, center, a little bit to the west in Germany. 100 people, and our, our goal was to, to plant a new church within one week. Church in Action, it was called. Kirche in Aktion, Mainz. My brother was the leader of that uh, ministry. He was the church planter. He had prepared and, uh, and studied in theology. He wanted to, to do that. And I, as his brother, um, joined in, was part of that group that week. So we had structured our week and our days the following. In the mornings, we gathered at the youth hostel. We were all staying at the local youth hostel uh, to do some, uh, some training and some workshops and some worship services. We had some pi pastors who came in to do some training with us. Then in the, in the afternoon, we wanted to go out in the city, into the city, and bless the city, city with just with practical things that we could do. Our, our, our vision, the vision of the church, was to see how heaven breaks into our lives, into our cities, and into this world. So we wanted to do some heaven on earth stuff in the city, and, and uh, one of the things we did, we, we went and picked up trash. We, we said in heaven there's no trash, so we, we need to make sure on earth there's also no trash. Uh, we went to the elderly homes and visited with, with some elderly people that were all left by themselves in these elderly homes because in, in heaven no one's lonely. So on earth no one should be lonely. So we did all kinds of practical stuff and then in the evenings we had put a huge tent uh, down at the market center uh, of mines where we had some uh, evangelistic services where we uh, uh, gave out some food and then we, we shared a gospel message. So it was during one of these workshop sessions in the mornings that uh, a pastor here from the States was leading a workshop. And I was his translator. I translated him from, from English into German. And he was speaking on this passage from Colossians chapter 1. He was talking about, about this mystery, this secret uh, that has been hidden throughout the ages, but now has been revealed to the church, which is Christ in you, Christ living in you, the hope of this world, the hope of glory. And the way the pastor explained this passage, he said, now in the Old Testament we read about God living in a temple. But in the New Testament, we can read that God decided to have a new dwelling place. God decided to, to go and inhabit human bodies. That's what we celebrate at Pentecost. God moving with his spirit into people. And to give an illustration, he, he said, that means that if God moved into people, that means wherever you go, God goes. If, if you, for example, he said, if you ex go to a restaurant or a coffee shop, that actually means that God goes to a restaurant. God goes to a coffee shop. Because God lives inside of you. If God lives in inside of you, you are in him, Christ is in you, you are in Christ. Then wherever you go, God goes. So he said, uh, so what you need to focus on is being and not doing. Being in Christ, Christ in you, not doing so much stuff. He said we're called human beings, not human doings. So you should all be more, he said. As I said, I was, I was translating him uh, and trying to do a good job from uh, English to German, but I translated him, but I inside of myself I was kind of shaking my head. You know, I, I was there to, to, to do something. We, we had called on all these people to plant a new church. There, there's lots of things that we need to do. Uh, it's called church in action. <laughs> uh, and so we, we want to do some stuff together here. So it sounds very nice and theologically that we just need to be, be in Christ, and that's all we need to do. Uh, and, and so I, I wasn't really agreeing with the pastor. But I translated him. So the, the session ended, and as I told you, after the morning sessions, we were supposed to go into the city to do some stuff. 
Now I thought to myself, um, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to be. Because the passage just said, I, I don't need to do anything, I just need to be. So I went downtown, I wasn't assigned to a, speci a special group. Uh, I just went downtown and I thought, I'm just going to be, uh, and I'm going to go into a coffee shop and just order uh, a double shot of espresso. It was a beautiful sunny day, there was a coffee shop outside, they had some chairs and some tables. So I sat down outside and I, I ordered my double shot of espresso and I was just being. About 10 minutes into being, I, I noticed that, there, that a man entered uh, th the coffee shop as well and he, he took a seat uh, about two tables away from me and ordered himself a cappuccino. He, he was dressed very nice, had a nice suit and a nice tie and, and seemed like a businessman on his, on his business duties just having a break. So he was sitting there enjoying his cappuccino. I was sitting over here enjoying my espresso for about 10 minutes and then uh, our eyes kind of met. And then he leaned over to me and said, so what do you do? <laughs> I said, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> just being, just uh, hanging out here. <laughs> so we started uh, to have a conversation across two tables, him sitting over here enjoying his cappuccino, me sitting over there enjoying my espresso. We started uh, having a conversation. His name was Notka Zeitz, and he was an insurance broker. And about 10 minutes into the conversation, he just got up and walked over to my table and just sat down, and we had a conversation about his life and my life. He started sharing that he's an insurance broker and uh, that he's trying to build a team of other insurance brokers, and he's doing some business here in town. Uh, and I told him that I'm a pastor in Frankfurt and we just shared about uh, over coffee uh, wha what our lives are all about and, and we got to more and to more into a, into a, a spiritual conversation. He, t he told me that, that actually at the moment, if he's very honest, that he feels like a red running in, in a race. Constantly on the go, always doing, always producing. And, and no time for rest. And within that a conversation that lasted about one and a half hours, I got to share a little bit with him about the good news of Jesus. How when Jesus enters your life, you have some rest. You have some peace. I, 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 I ex tried to explain the principle of the, of the Sabbath. How we don't have to keep go going and going and going. Well, after one and a half hours, when we... I uh, wanted to say goodbye. He looked at me and said, Chris, you know what? When I started talking to you, I wanted to recruit you for my team. And now it looks like you've recruited me for your team. <laughs> so we said goodbye, uh, and I invited him to one of our evening service, uh, services. So Anotka is about to leave. I'm still standing there getting up. I had a briefcase with me. As I pick up my briefcase, I'm still right at the spot where I had sit down, sat down uh, two hours ago for my espresso. I look up and I see a woman like one table in front of me. And already during my conversation with, with Notka as we were sitting together, I had seen from the corner of my eyes that there was a lady who had some elephant ears. She was listening in. <laughs> so as, I'm, I, as I try to get up, I look at this lady who's in front of me and she looks at me with these wide open eyes. So I look at her and, I, and all I can say is, so what can I do for you? And then I will never forget her first sentence. She said, my name is Frau Dörfer. My name is Frau Dörfer. 
My husband died five years ago. Well, I've had many people introduce themselves to me, but hardly ever has someone, some stranger told me within the very first sentence what, what their problem is. I said, well, let me just go to the restroom. I'll be right back. I go to the restroom. As I come back to my seat, Frau Dörfer has taken her chair and put it like right next to me on the other side. And for another one and a half hours, I sit with Frau Dörfer, who's 55 years old, whose husband had died five years ago, whose dog had died two years ago, and her problem was exactly the opposite from Notka's problem. Her problem wasn't that she was so busy or so stressed out. Her problem was that she was bored to death. Ever since her husband had died, she, she was lost. She was without purpose, without sense of belonging. So every day she comes downtown Mainz and just walks from one coffee shop and restaurant to another to just ha hang out and, and does not know what to do with her life. And I got to share a little bit about the adventure that Christ introduces to our lives. Yes, he, he brings you some peace if you're stressed out. But he also can bring you some e adventure and excitement and some purpose if you don't have any. I don't know if you can imagine how I left this place after about three, three and a half hours of me just being. I walked away that day and, and I felt like God had taught me a lesson. Christ in you is the hope of the world. Christ living in me is the hope of the world. I am a blessing. N not, not because I am so great. but because a great God decided to live within me. And so wherever I go, God goes and does his thing, ministers to people, heals those that are hurt. I walked away that day and I, I went back home and I, I studied that scripture passage more into, in detail. And, and later on, I, I found that actually this verse in, in Colossians 1, 27, Christ in you, the hope of glory, is not Christ in you as, as singular, but you as plural. It, it, it's a message that the apostle uh, Paul passed on to the church and said, Christ living not in you as an individual, but in you as a community is the hope of the world. Christ living in us together, that is the hope of the world. And I started asking myself, what would that look like if we together, Christ living in us, if we together went places? What would it look like if we together as the body of Christ actually showed up in the dark places of this world, not to do something, but to be something for them, for this world. And this thought and, and, and this, this idea basically led me to resigning from, from my church where I was pastoring back then and also entering into church planting. In 2010, we started with a new church plan, church in action in the city of Frankfurt. And if I could, if I could tell you all the, st all, the, all the stories, all the people, all the experiences that we've had in the last six years as we together, as a team, we started with 10 people. And of all places, we started in a, in a late night pub downtown Frankfurt. And all we did at the beginning is for the first one and a half years, us 10 Christians, and, and they, these were all students from Frankfurt University. 
We just started going to this late night pub that opens at six in the evening till six in the morning. To to just be there. And and start having conversations with with people that before that I, I would have never uh, had a conversation within my church. S since then we we've we've moved out and started with some coffee shops and uh, started to have worship services and bars and restaurants. Uh, we we opened up a youth center. We we have a whole uh, ministry with with homeless people in a homeless center. We do refugee ministry. We do all kinds of stuff in more than 34 locations in four different cities where Christians decided not to call people to come to them, but actually to show up in those places where normally church does not gather or assemble. Uh, if you want to uh, hear some more of these stories, uh, we've put up a website, churchinaction.com, and we have uh, put up some videos with, uh, with that basically give you some behind-the-scenes stuff on what's happening as we're moving out, trying with an urban environment, trying to see what does it look like if a, if a piece of heaven breaks into people's lives in our cities. But let, let me just, just tell you one story from this week as I close off. Last Sunday, we had a, an evening service a, in, at a rooftop bar in Darmstadt. It, it's a nice, it's a nice bar overlooking the area of Darmstadt, and uh, a young, young uh, guy here from the U.S., Eric Smith, is actually pastoring, city pastor. He came over on a mission trip, and then I asked him to stay, and he said, "These guys need help, so I'll stay." So he's become our city pastor, and he was leading through the service, and and after the service, a woman came up to him with 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 a guy, and introduced herself. Very quickly in the conversation, he found out that she's a prostitute. And the guy standing next to her is her pimp. So they started having that conversation. And apparently the story goes that six months ago, one of our teams that goes to the brothels, we, ha we have a ministry where every week we go, in, in every city we go into the brothels, and we have women who actually go into these houses and go into the rooms to sit and talk to the prostitutes that work there, sit with them on the bed and, and share, uh, talk to them, read some scriptures sometimes and, and offer prayer for them. So apparently this woman that just showed up this last Sunday, she'd been met by, by some of our, 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 our team members six months ago and, and they, they started having conversations. She's, she's a woman from Bulgaria she, she's been in prostitution for a number of years. She left behind a few, few kids in Bulgaria, apparently. And, and, and we started to talking to them. About a month ago, that, that woman ha had a birthday party or wanted to have a birthday party. So she invited some of our team members from that ministry. She invited them to, to a place next to that brothel. Uh, next door, there, there's a little coffee place. A and a number of our, our, our people from church, they showed up with cakes and, and uh, with uh, balloons, and they organized and helped with a birthday party for her. Apparently, that's when they met her pimp. And they started having some conversations with him. And last Sunday night, for the very first time, they showed up at one of our bar services. I doubt they would have ever entered a normal church building. And after the service, they came up to Eric and they asked for three things. Number one, they asked if we would baptize them. Number two, they asked if we could get them, help them to get out of prostitution. He wants to repent of what he's made her to do. And number three, they asked Eric whether he would do their wedding. I couldn't believe it. But I just love it. Christ in us. We can decide to go even into the darkest places. I can tell you these brothels are very dark places. 
but apparently we're having some of the most honest conversations in these places with people where it's not us but God ministering to them. So I hope you take away today one thing. Christ living in you is the hope of the world. Christ living in you is the hope of the world. Wherever you go, God goes. So please, go places. Amen. And, and they told me that I should dismiss you, so have a great day. <laughs> <laughs>